Okay, so by now, I'm sure you guys are tired of me taking these week long hiatuses and all this other crazy stuff. But look, this time, it was the most justified of us all. Because in the midst of this, I've been in a content change, as most of you know. Most of my videos were gaming related, and most of you also know that I was not at all satisfied with the content I was making. I felt like we were making very good videos, good quality, all that stuff, very well thought out, but I felt like it wouldn't really build a brand, and that's really what I wanted to start with, um, with this YouTube thing. Of course, it's fun making videos and things like that, but I also want to take it somewhere. With that being said, as many of you also know, this is the beginning and start to that new content shift. I'm doing it in the form of a NBA playoff prediction for 2022. Now, we know the playoffs are coming up and I wanted it to come out a little bit earlier, but last night there were a couple games being like the Bulls and Bucks and you know some other playoff matchups, potential playoff matchups that we'll see in the coming weeks. And before I got this video out and finalized and all that beautiful stuff, by the way, before we continue, go ahead and hit that subscribe button while you're here. But anyway, I wanted to watch last night's game and it told me a lot. It told me a lot of things. You know, the Bulls are some frauds. Uh, they have not beaten a team that's top three in the West or the East from what I understand. I could be getting that figure wrong. If not, um, I think that's what it is. If not, I'll get yeah, i'll figure it out and correct myself later but in any case they got molly Wap. uh tonight there's a couple good games going on with uh brooklyn and the grizzlies um as i speak it's 104 103 at the end of the third quarter so uh it don't seem like much de defense is being played over there but strap up get ready for this content shift because i'm excited for it i hope you guys get just as excited for it as i do it's gonna be a little chill thing i won't be too up and rowdy like i was with the gaming videos because you know gaming is a heightened atmosphere but when we talking basketball we just chilling like we in the barbershop so without further ado here's my 2022 nba playoff predictions now as i told you guys before y'all do know we started with gaming and stuff and i may do that a little down the line so don't worry about it it might come back it's probably gonna come back yeah, it's going to come back at some point. But I want to start with the basketball videos because I love basketball more. It's a lot easier to do. 2K is just in a no man's land in terms of content. So I'm going with something I love to do. And honestly, writing the script for this just felt like a breeze. But I, I know y'all don't want to hear that anymore. So we're going to start with the Western Conference. Now, the West, it seems pretty locked in to me. Uh, at the top, you got Phoenix, Memphis, and then Golden State. Now, it sucks that Golden State, they had Steph go down. As we all know, that's a major blow to Golden State no matter what. Greatest shooter of all time. There's no denying that by anybody. But I, they say he will come back for game one. If it's not game one, I'm sure he'll probably be back about game two, game three. Uh, he wasn't out too long. Thankfully, it was only a sprained foot. He didn't have anything major, a special ankle injury because we all know Steph and his ankles are not the best, but we got Phoenix at the one, Memphis at the two, Golden State staying at the three. Now, Utah, I still think they're frauds, but I think they stay at four as well. They are one of those teams where they're regular season Warriors, bro. Like, let's be real, let's be honest. They're like the Steelers when they went 10-0. They're like the team that they can play amazing when there's no pressure, but once you get to the playoff atmosphere, I don't know what happens. It seems like Donovan Mitchell, either he's the only one that doesn't crumble. As we all know, playoff defense increases, and it is one of those things where they're going to target and isolate Donovan Mitchell more to force other guys to score. And I don't think Utah has the firepower to be able to do that. So I, I really think that's where it comes from. Um, there's been a lot of talk lately in the Twitter spaces, Twitterverse about how Rudy Gobert is both a godsend and hindrance to the Jazz because when he's on the floor, their defense is different. It's miles ahead. It's crazy. But what comes with that is offensive play that, you know, other bigs can do a lot better than he can offensively. Like Joel Embiid, Jokic, they might not be up to par with his defense, but they're definitely past him and light years away offensively um so 
I feel like that's where they struggle. They don't have the superstar scores, or I guess you could say star scores, because some teams, they have some other stars around them that can score very well, like, you know, Luka having Dorian Finney-Smith. Um, they traded him, but they had Seth Curry. And, you know, they have guys around him. They ended up getting Spencer Dinwiddie, which I'll talk about in a minute, but I think that was a great pickup by them. But in any case, uh, Utah at four and the Mavericks at five, I think... Uh, the Mavericks can't sneak in at five. I think Dallas has been playing pretty good ball. The acquisition of Dinwiddie, like I said, it's it's proven to be phenomenal, especially with Tim Hardaway hurt. He was the perfect pickup. A guy that can go get his own bucket and shit. One night, he might just get you 30, 35. You never know. Um, now, I think Denver, they'll stay at the six. Jokic is top two in MVP Candace's candidate. <laughs> um, I played in... Jokic is top two in the MVP race, but without Jamal Murray and MPJ, it's been rough. Now, the team is playing well, don't get me wrong, but I'll say this, and this might be a hot take. This might just be a hot take. I might have a Twitter space or go into one where we talk about this, but I think this could be a bright spot for the Nuggets and the younger players like Bones Highland and things like that. They can get some good in-game experience. And you never know those young guys that Denver has that has to play because Jamal Murray, MPJ, and the other issues they're having and things like that, that might help them to succeed in the next two to three years. You might see them built like a Warriors team where they do have a lot of young guys, a couple veterans in uh, Steph, Clay, Draymond, you know, and they brought Iggy back. That's four guys right there that are key pieces that know the culture, things like that. And you put a bunch of young guys around them that just want to go get, go after it with Kamunga. You got Gary Pitt in the second. Um, you know, you got all these guys on these teams that are young, or not on these teams, on the Warriors that are young, that are playing wild basketball, good basketball, running around, um, playing defense, great defense. And they don't even have Wiseman back, which is even crazier to even think about. But I digress in saying you could possibly see the Nuggets doing something like that. Bones Highland is a very good player. Um, you know, Jokic will always make the right read, right plays. Um, I think the Nuggets are very well coached, uh, underratedly. I don't think people really take notice to how well they're coached. Um, and that's why I think they stuck around in the middle of the pack in the West for as long as they did. Uh, but again, this could be a bright spot for them. At 7, 8, 9, and 10, I think all those hold firm, seeing Minnesota playing the Clippers, and then the loser of that playing the Lakers and Pelicans for the eighth seed. Now, I'll say this, and all you guys know I am a Lakers fan. It has been very, very disappointing and frustrating year, to say the least, because we're not a losing franchise, and we are a spoiled fan base. I will not lie to you. Now, I think if AD can come back, um, and is pretty healthy, healthy enough. Braun continues playing the way he has. They can, they have a chance to get all the way uh, to the second round. Yeah, don't think I was going anywhere further than that. Honestly, I'd rather the Lakers just let AD sit. It, it sucks that it will be a wasted year for Braun, but I mean, he got closer to number one in top scoring. It will be a wasted year. However, I'd rather us have AD sit down, relax for the summer, get his foot right, get any other health issues right, come back next year stronger, you know, revamp this team, get some guys that play defense, get rid of Melo, figure out what to do with Kendrick Nunn because he seems like he doesn't want to play, um, and just get some guys that want to ball out with a healthy AD and a healthy Brown with fresh legs going into a new season with a new coach. I think it could be something beautiful. Now, not everybody thinks the way I do, but that's okay. Um, now, if they do bring AD back, which I think they probably might end up doing, like I said, I think they could go on to the uh, second round. Now, in regards to my Lakers, I'm going to be honest with y'all. That's a video for another day that I already got in the ranks waiting. Now, moving on, I think that Minnesota will beat the Clippers for that seventh seed, and we will end up seeing a Lakers and Clippers matchup playing, which is kind of funny to me and kind of ironic, because think about it like this. A few years ago, when these teams were first built, I don't think anyone at all, and you're lying to me if you say so, would have predicted these two teams to be in the state that they're in now. I, I personally, I can't bet against Braun. Is Braun, bro, 37 or not? You see what he's been doing at 37? 
So I say the Lakers come out and win and end up playing Phoenix in the first round of the NBA playoffs. So in the end, we would see the matchups of Phoenix in LA with the 1-8, Memphis, Minnesota with the 2-7, Golden State and Denver with the 3-6, and then with the 4-5, and five, we're going to end up seeing Utah and the Maver- Mavericks, which I surprisingly am most excited about because I feel like the Mavericks can actually go a bit deeper this year it might just be recency bias based on how i've seen them play with spencer dinwiddie on the squad and uh how i know tim hardaway can and will play and people are asleep on jalen brunson not only is he playing extremely well but their bigs are playing well maxi Kleba is playing the best defense i've ever seen him play and you know that team might be able to do some things just keep dwight howard on that team might be able to do some things just keep dwight power on the bench you hear that, Jason Kidd? Just keep him on the bench. That's all you got to do. Now, with the Warriors, even before Steph got hurt, they really weren't playing that well for whatever reason, um, like they were early in the year. But they were my pick to come out in the West. Um, I think Steph does come back pretty early in the first round. And honestly, I have Golden State narrowly coming out of the West, outdoing the Grizzlies in the Western Conference Finals. Now, I know it's crazy to not have the favorite Phoenix Suns in the Western Conference Finals against the Warriors and I was very close to choosing them and I was battling back and forth but CP is hurt right now and I think once the playoffs start it'll get a little bit more difficult for those guys we know the history CP does have with getting hurt in the playoffs and things like that but I think he's just just the general he's the guy that makes the motor run without him is going to be tough and I will be honest if the Lakers actually bring a healthy AD back and I mean a true healthy AD where the reason he was sitting on the bench looking dripped out pissing me off was because he was actually healing making sure he didn't play at 89 90 percent he was playing at 100 now it's going to be a question of his uh endurance and stamina but we'll see when that time comes so as for now we're going to move on to the Eastern Conference. Now, before we continue, I just want to say, if you haven't subscribed already, please do that. It'll help your boy out. No, for real. It'll be really dope. I appreciate that. But anyway, on the East side of things, I have the Heat sitting firm at the one spot. They've been playing some good ball this year. Hopefully, they don't crash out the way they did last year. To me, it's good for basketball when they're doing well, and honestly, I'm rooting for them in all accounts. Um, Then I got the Bucks at number two. They're, they're strong this year, man. And the way Giannis is not scared to shoot the ball, I wonder if teams are actually going to wall up this year, force him to shoot, and see if that'll beat them seven games. Because, yes, Giannis has improved shooting-wise and things like that, but is it something that can last for seven games and beat a team in a four-game series? I want to see if that'll happen. Now, I do have them beating the 76ers in their last matchup this year. They play Philly on a three-game road trip where they see Memphis, Philly, then Brooklyn. And I think Harden needs, needs, needs to wake up. Um, This will be a tune-up for playoff time. If Strip Club Beer shows up, Philly is in trouble, and they're going to need to figure out who they need to pair with Joel because, as you guys know, he never signed the extension. And I think this is going to be a test for both of them. Now, personally, I don't think it'll really work because their play styles clash. And that was not the same issue with Ben Simmons to a degree. Now, him and Ben Simmons, their play styles kind of clash. But the thing is, Ben Simmons just didn't shoot. Now, if he didn't shoot, Joel could stretch the four while Ben plays in the post. Now, so that to me, that doesn't really clash so, so much because of the fact that Harden will do both shoot and drive. If Joel is doing the same thing, except, you know, not spotting up so so much they'll be okay but we all know joel falls in love with the three i just i want to see philly i'm uh, never mind that was a lie i don't want to see philly do well i'm not gonna lie to you that was probably a biased take but anyway i think in the playoffs there'll be a second round exit and that's because him and joel will end up clashing based on the fact that um the defenses they hone in more and it's gonna be tough for them but in any case I, I, I don't see the 76ers going much of anywhere, uh, but I hope they do. 
not really but surprisingly i have boston at number three um at four i do have the 76ers and right behind them i have the bulls locking up the last spot outside of the play-in i have the Cavs. um the play-in is more like more than likely staying the way it is with toronto brooklyn charlotte and atlanta all in order and then coming out of the play-in i think charlotte outlasts the hawks charlotte is coasting on a five game win streak as we speak and are playing pretty well down the stretch um it's all about streaks how many um how many runs you could go on as a team and going into the playoffs hot and charlotte is doing that pretty well right now they're pretty young so it's gonna be tough for them but that five game win streak going to the playoffs helps their confidence a lot um, how they handled their three-game road trip with New York, Philly, and Miami will really show us who they are. But for now, I have them beating Atlanta to see Toronto. And um, after that, I have the winner of that seeing the Nets draw the seven seed and playing against the Bucks. Think that Charlotte can keep the match going and actually beat Toronto to get the eighth seed and make the playoffs. Um, and in the East overall, coming out of the East, I did have Milwaukee based on logic. However, who I want to come out of the East is Miami. It would be dope to see Jimmy B get a ring. Only issue is that Tyler Hero would be getting her one too. So at this point, I just want to see good hoop out the East at this point. I, I don't know. This year is unlike any other where we are starting to see so many young emerging stars and the next generation of role players. And as a hoop head, it's, it's really dope. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, this playoffs might be one of the most exciting in the last couple years mainly because i feel like we're gonna see a lot of young talent not only emerge as stars but also start to show what kind of playoff players they can and will be in the future uh, i hope you guys all enjoyed if you think i got anything or any of these predictions wrong let me know in the comments below if y'all want me to come out with a predictions video as to how the series will go specifically let me know in the comment section below I love you guys as always. It is your boy Steph, and I'm out. Peace.